in the league. Herd hierarchy. Time is now. Let's go. The top 10 NFL teams according to college. The Number Packers. 10. The Packers. That's how I feel like I should talk with my hat on backwards. Uh, the Packers on a three-game winning streak. Third comeback win of 10-plus points. That's the best and the most in Aaron Rodgers' era. I've been critical of Matt LaFleur. I don't think he's incapable, but I'm not sure he's as good as the media makes him out to be. Well, Aaron and Matt LaFleur are 15-0 in November, so it counts. I do worry about the injury to Christian Watson. It's taken them a while to get Aaron and these young receivers conjoined. They have. I still wish they'd run the ball a little more with Aaron Jones consistently, but they make the top 10, Packers at 10. Number nine. The Chargers. They've won four of five. Listen, their defense with a defensive head coach is finally playing well. Uh, they have had 13 sacks in the last three games, and here comes Bosa, who's supposed to return this week. All you have to do to Justin Herbert is play decent defense, and he wins. He's 18-4 and four when the Chargers hold opponents to fewer than 27 points. So when they play average defense, Justin Herbert wins. They did last night against an awful team, and he won again. Number eight. The Jaguars. Uh, I had them above the Lions last week, and people pushed back. I think it's a real football team. I think Trevor Lawrence is a star. He's the best quarterback in the NFL passer rating since week nine. Big, tall moves. He has the largest increase ever in passer rating one year to the second. Um, they're on a three-game winning streak. They don't know what they don't know. They're young. If they do make the playoffs, they're a one-and-done. But he has become, with Doug Peterson, the quarterback, I thought he would be Jags at eight. Number seven. Minnesota at seven. The ceiling's lower, but Kirk Cousins is 11-0 and 0 in one-score games. That is just insane. If Dan Marino was 11-0 and 0 in one-score games, that would be insane. He's playing with confidence. The last three weeks leads the NFL in passer rating. They've got stars. they got a lot of things I like. A capable quarterback, an offensive coach, a star receiver. Um, you know, I think we all kind of realize this is not going to be a Super Bowl winning team, but they're fun. It's a great city that loves its football, and they got a heck of a team. Number six. The Eagles. Lane Johnson's not playing, so they're not a top five team if he's not playing. That's their reality. I don't care what they did. This is not a standings list. They are not a top five team without Lane Johnson, as the guy with the hat on backwards says. But their defense has six plus sacks does Philadelphia in four straight games. That is a lot of sacks. The D-line, really good. They can stay in games. Cross your fingers on Jalen Hurts coming back. Philadelphia at number six. Number five. Dallas Cowboys just beat them. Was a backup, but they're seven and two since Dak returned. They've scored 25 plus in eight straight games. So we all thought they'd bring on OBJ. It hasn't hurt them. They're doing a good job offensively. Now Dak has 11 picks since returning from injuries. That's the most by any quarterback since week seven. It is a little concerning. And in big spots, I don't trust Mike McCarthy. But we've got to be fair here. They remind me a lot of the Chargers. Great individual players, not quite buttoned up to be a Final Four team. But Dallas, they can pop you. They're a heavyweight with a punch. I don't know what their chin is, but they're a heavyweight with a punch. Number four. The Bills. Okay, we all like the Bills, except Nick Wright. Here's the thing about the Bills that worries me. 24 giveaways this year. Only the Colts have more. You're not beating Kansas City and Cincinnati if you're giving the ball away two and three times a game. Now, they're on a six-game winning streak. There's so much I like. I like the owners. I like the GM. I pretty much like the coach. I love the quarterback. Uh, Josh Allen, though, has had five multiple interception games this year. That is the most in the NFL. I think you can get away with that in the NFC. I do not think you can get away with that in the AFC. That's why I have Buffalo at four. Number three. The Niners. I have questions about Brock Purdy, too, but they have an eight-game winning streak. They have allowed 20 or fewer points in eight straight games. Don't listen to anybody. This is the most talented roster in the league. They have a pro bowler everywhere. Corner, safety, two at linebacker, rush end. They're great. This team is loaded. And Brock Purdy, as I said a month ago, he's good enough to win multiple playoff games. Can he go to Philadelphia and win a playoff game? I'm not sure. But this team is absolutely stacked. I couldn't be happier for John Lynch, who I covered in Tampa, was a teammate of at Fox. Now he's the GM, and he has crushed it. This roster is fantastic. I have them at three. Number two. Kansas City beat them and beat them soundly in the Bay Area. Um, it's the best offense, the scariest offense. They have more touchdown passes, 37 
than touchdown passes allowed, 31. And again, they've rebuilt the defense, O-line, rebuilding receivers. Now, they're not as electric as they were with Tyreek Hill. So I do not believe this team is the same kind of team that can trail 24-0 to a playoff-level team like Houston a few years ago and come back. But it's Mahomes, it's Andy Reid, Steve Spagnola dials up good playoff defenses, Kansas City at two. Number one. For the second straight week, I have Cincinnati at one. J-Mac was selling this stock like crazy two months ago. And I said, they lost to Dallas. And I said, the second half of that Dallas game, that's who they are. The real key to Cincinnati isn't Jamar Chase. It's not Joe Mixon. It's Joe Burrow plus this. They're one of two teams that have the same starting offensive line in each of the first 15 games this season. So the key with Cincinnati now, Burrow's not getting hit. Burrow has a lot of time. They've got two running backs if one goes down. Multiple receivers if one goes down. This is how you build an NFL team. And we don't know if Zach Taylor's a great coach, but we have to be honest about this. You can't win as many big games and close games as Zach Taylor has done. He deserves credit, too. He's from the McVay tree. For the record, Sean McVay's coach in Minnesota, 11-0 in one-score games. Sean McVay tree coach in Cincinnati, been to a Super Bowl. So what is happening is Sean McVay is becoming the Andy Reid of this generation where his assistants are sponges. They soak up his information. Brandon Staley's from his tree. He just made the playoffs. So there is my uh, there is my herd hierarchy. What do you make of it? No holes at all. This is probably your best effort of the season. I just can't get over the hat backwards. You look like you're about to talk to some teenagers about vaping. <laughs> you know? <laughs> what, what are the, what, I'm sorry. I can't contain myself. That the internet's going to have some fun with this, Colin. I have a feeling. That was funny. Thank you. Kids, don't <laughs> vape. <laughs> I, I will say, I've always liked when my quarterbacks, and I'll just do this for a second, when my quarterbacks come to the podium on Wednesday and they have the team hat on and, the, and, the, and Century Bank behind them and they address the media. I think this looks kind of like a college frat boy, which, by the way, when I clean my garage out <laughs> every year, and you got to go into the crevices and the corners, we all do it in the spring, I wear my hat backwards. Interesting. I don't love the look publicly, which is why I'm being shamed today. <laughs> no vaping. All right, do we have Nick Wright? Is he here or not? Oh, we do. It's not on the screen. Uh, all right, let's bring on my buddy, First Things First co-host, Nick Wright. Look at this. What's up, my friend? You... Look like a uh-huh. 70s. You're like a member of the Beatles. Okay. You look so good. Okay. And look at this. Thanks. I appreciate that. Did you see, you know how you say, and I want to talk about your hierarchy in a moment, but you know how you say our show is the only show in sports with no budget? Yeah. Did you see what we did Friday to celebrate Trevor Lawrence's arrival to the playoffs? We had professional trumpeteers in full royalty costumes come out on set. Just throwing money away, Colin. That's what you can do when you're the only show on sports TV with no budget. Can I can I have a few qualms with the herd hierarchy? Sure. Can I just throw it? Of course. All right. So I agree with a lot of it. You said one thing, though, about the Jags that I don't know if you totally believe, which is you said they're one and done in the playoffs. Yeah. If they beat Tennessee in two weeks and they're at home, you don't think the Jags and Doug Peterson could beat the Chargers in Jacksonville in a playoff game in a 4-5? Because I think they could. I think that, listen, I think Herbert versus Lawrence is very, very close. I like Peterson more than I like Staley. That would be a home game Fair. for them. The Chargers Fair. having to go all the way cross country. Fair. I actually think the, the Jags could win that game and find themselves in the divisional round. The other thing you said, you just took a shot at me. You're like, everyone likes the Bills except Nick Wright. I'm just the only truth teller in America when it comes to everyone's favorite quarterback, Josh Allen. Colin, would you believe me if I told you that over the last 10 weeks, 10 weeks, Josh Allen is 30th in completion percentage, 26th in passer rating, and has the most turnovers of any quarterback in the league. That's two and a half months of football. He's supposed to be their strength. 
Their other strength was Von Miller, who's done for the year. Yeah. So that, to me, I, I understand they're winning games, but I think Cincinnati is going to be a handful for them on Monday. Yeah. And the last thing I'll say is this. I agree with you entirely on Cincinnati, but you mentioned the continuity on the offensive line. Lyle Collins yes, being lost for yes. the year with the torn ACL. Yeah. I want to see how they deal with that right. because that has been such a huge part of their success, and now he's gone. Yeah, he was real spotty early in the year. I think he got his stuff together, yep. then he got hurt. This is it's a bad time in the year for some.